Hey guys, Worlton or Nick here today, and we're going to be talking about five things beginners can do to improve at Valorant. Valorant is Riot Games' new tactical first-person shooter. Its mechanics behave similarly to another TAC FPS game called Counter-Strike. Many Valorant players already have experience playing Counter-Strike, and because of this, already have the basic mindset and mechanics to be successful in a match of Valorant. I personally have thousands of hours played in Counter-Strike. Tell me one. No. Market, market. And have been grinding Valorant since it was in beta this April. Last player God standing. Damn it, dude. Spike planted. Ah, oh, shit. Backsite, cubby, and one unknown. Imposter kill. One enemy remains. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. He's oh, in no. the no. oh, no. oh, oh, shit. With this combined knowledge and experience, I want to pass on to you guys the top five things beginners can do to improve in Valorant. Number one, change your crosshair. I see so many people playing Valorant with the default crosshair. No, this is bad. The default crosshair is not the best optimized for playing Valorant at all. And if you find yourself missing a lot of your shots, your crosshair could definitely be a factor. If you want to change your crosshair, you can change them in the settings menu. Personally, I like to use a crosshair with these settings. Now I do have a note. Many players, myself included sometimes, like to play with a crosshair that has a dot. This is fine, and a lot of pro players actually use dots in their crosshairs because it personally helps them aim better. If you're going to use a dot, make sure that the dot thickness and line thickness are both even or both odd. This will keep them from having misaligned elements. For example, if your dot thickness is 2, but your line thickness is 3, your crosshair will look like this. This will make it very hard to aim, and it is nothing short of miraculous how many new players I've seen play with crosshairs like this. Some people might say, oh, you need to have a really small crosshair so you can click heads. Or, oh, you need to have a crosshair with a really big gap so your crosshair doesn't block enemy heads. Or, use just a dot with no lines. Or, don't use a dot, that's really dumb. All of these people are correct. Crosshairs are 100%, I cannot stress this enough, 100% personal preference. It is crazy how many people I see go onto prosettings.net, copy someone's settings, and then be like, Alright, I'm a pro now. Pro crosshairs are definitely like a good starting point, but at the end of the day, uh, you have to do what is most comfortable for you. If you do what's most comfortable for you, then you will most definitely be aiming to the best of your ability. Number two, mouse settings. Your mouse is just about the most important thing when it comes to playing well in any FPS game. If you are playing on a cheaper low quality mouse, I heavily suggest investing in a better mouse. A few great gaming mice that won't destroy your wallet are the HyperX Pulse Fire Surge, the Logitech G502 Hero, and the SteelSeries Sensei 310. I also suggest investing in a big mouse pad. I personally um, either suggest the HyperX Fury S, the Logitech G240, or the SteelSeries QCK Classic. If you're wondering why I haven't suggested any Razer mice, well, if you've seen my stream, you know how I feel about Razer Mice. Uh, what's my favorite mouse? Um, definitely not anything made by Razer. Uh, let's see. So when I started gaming, I had a Razer Death Adder 2000. It broke. I got a Razer Death Adder 2000 as a replacement. It broke. And then I had another 2000 after that. And then a 3000, a Mamba an Elite, a Death Adder Elite, and then another Death Adder Elite. So I've had seven Razer Mice. Seven Razer Mice? They've all broken. Terrible. I, like, I'm sure Razer makes great stuff and I'm just unlucky, but I've been through seven Razer Mice, so I'm traumatized, I guess. Never doing that again. To make sure your mouse sensitivity within the game is good, we can do this little experiment in-game to find a sense that's comfortable for you. 
First, we're going to open up the shooting range and find any corner. Any corner will work. Second, you're going to put your crosshair on the corner. And third, we're going to strafe back and forth using the A and D keys and make sure that your crosshair stays on the corner. If you find yourself overshooting the corner, then you should lower your sense. If it feels like your crosshair is moving with your strafes too much, then you should raise your sense. When changing your sense, you should do it in increments of hundredths or .01. By doing this, you can figure out your optimal sensitivity, and that will put you one step closer to improvement. One more quick thing to remember before we move on is scope sensitivity. This is automatically set to 1, which means when you scope in, your mouse will move just as fast as it does when you are not scoped in. This is fine, and a lot of people like this, but some people, like myself, like to lower our scope sensitivity. I personally use 0.875 instead of 1 because this feels very similar to the default zoom sensitivity in Counter-Strike. Number 3 is crosshair placement. Crosshair placement might be the most important thing in Valorant. In Valorant, hitboxes are separated into three distinct groups, legs, body, and head. As you can guess, headshots by far do the most damage. To make sure you get the most kills, always aim for the head when you can. This doesn't just mean trying to put your crosshair on people's heads, but it also means pre-aiming where people will be through walls. A good way to practice this is to go into a private map with cheats on, and pretty much just walk through the entire map and try to learn about all of the different angles and spots that people like to play. If you are able to master pre-aiming and headshots, you're going to be a god at the game. It's going to be incredibly beneficial. Here's a clip of me utilizing the fact that headshots do the most damage and taking full advantage of that. One, one short. Raise up top. Last player standing. One enemy remaining. Oh my god! Dang. That was good shit. Fuck. That's pretty good. Thank you. It's insane. A little side note before we move on. If you're using an operator, which is the 4500 credit sniper, don't aim for the head. Because this gun is the only gun that is a one shot to the body with full armor. So you should be aiming for the center of mass and not the head. Alright, so number four is going to be understanding the economy. In a standard game of Valorant, you start each half with 800 credits. And depending on if you win or lose the rounds, you will have a certain amount of income each round. You can see how much money you'll have next round here, in the buy menu. I could make an entire separate video about the economic theory of Valorant and the best most meta buying methods. If you guys want me to make that, leave a comment down below. But a general rule of thumb is you want to have 3900 credits plus whatever your abilities cost. How much your abilities cost is going to depend on your hero. Depending on your hero, you also might not need to buy all of your abilities every round, but for the most part, you should try to. The 3900 comes from the price of the premium rifles being the Phantom and the Vandal, and the plus the price of full armor. If you have less than this amount of money, depending on the position you are playing, you might want to save all of your credits, force buy all of your credits, or somewhere in between. This really is going to come down to the situation. Um, and it has way too many factors to make a really broad generalization, but I think the broadest generalization that I could make is do what your team is doing. It's kind of a meme to see your entire team ecoing and then your jet buys an operator with light armor. This can be really tilting from experience. <laughs> Don't be that guy. As long as you're spending your credits wisely and not pissing off your teammates, everything should be good. And this brings us to our last tip. Number five, you need to warm up. If you're a musician, you usually play scales and exercises before you go into a performance. And if you're an athlete, you probably stretch and do cardio before a game or event. Gaming is the exact same. I'll give you an example. So the other day, I woke up to 15 plus Snapchat messages at three in the morning telling me to get on Valorant. I told them I would need some time to warm up and they, they were kind of upset about that, but I was like, I, I need to do it. And when I opened up the range, I did the hard mode flicking test, and I killed 2 out of 30 bots. That, that's, a, that's like a 1 out of 15. 1 15th of the bots. I was exhausted. And if I went into a game like that, I would have just fed the enemy team the whole time and not been helpful. Thankfully, I demanded my warm-up time, and I ended up playing very well. 
warm-up is essential. Some people like to use programs like Kovac or AimLab to warm up. And these programs are great and I really can't hype them up enough. I personally like to play AimLab for 2 plus hours every day before I even consider queuing up a game of Valorant. I'm planning to have make a video soon about the best way to use AimLab and how to optimize it, so if you want to see that video, stay tuned. Before AimLab came out, I was also playing Kovac pretty much every single day. So I have a ton of hours in AIM FPS trainers, and I can tell you that they do work, but, this is a big but, they shouldn't replace warming up in-game. They should complement each other. You can play an AIM FPS trainer all you want, but if you can't control your movement well in the game, or you don't have any knowledge of the game you're playing, you're literally going to be a bot. Warming up also ties into the idea of practicing. Practicing is very important in order to improve in games. I'm sure there's going to be people who say, oh well, you shouldn't need to practice because, you know, it's just a game, right? Haha. <laughs> yeah, well, um, we're just going to go ahead and insert the ninja football tweet. So, in conclusion, making sure that you have the most optimal settings plus warming up and developing game knowledge are going to make you a much better Valorant player. If you like this video, please like this video, sub to the channel, yeah, okay, you guys know what I'm going to say. Thank you for watching, guys.